Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of Shell Black Whiteboard where we help you get the most out of the Salesforce platform. I'm your host, Shell Black, president and founder of shellblack.com and Salesforce MVP. And today we're jumping into opportunities. So let's talk a little bit about what is an opportunity. So when you start hearing words like revenue, sales, pipeline management, forecasting, you're probably talking about opportunities. It's in the database where we track dollars and revenue. So with opportunities, we use this module in the database to really track a couple of things. Who are we selling to? How much? And when do we expect that sale to happen? So with that, let me slide over here and we'll talk about how opportunities works inside salesforce.com. In, in an earlier episode, we talked about accounts and contacts where you could have an account, in this case, a company called Acme. And we know multiple contacts at that company, kind of a one to many relationship. So here are our people here. With opportunities, it's the same thing. For one company, you might have multiple opportunities, dozens perhaps, that you've created over time. So to, to kind of drill that, that topic home, here's a one opportunity from 2013. Here's an opportunity from 2013 that we lost, one that's open in our pipeline that we're tracking right now, and here's one in 2014 that we've won. So the concept here is for a given company, you can have multiple opportunities. So one-to-many relationships. So, all right, we're gonna flip back to this side of the board and we're gonna talk a little bit more about opportunities and then get into our standard fields. So again, opportunities, pipeline management, sales management, uh, working with forecasts. It's a big module in Salesforce. So even though we're starting at the very top with opportunities, there's a lot that goes on underneath opportunities if you choose to have these things turned on as an administrator. So you can get into products, product schedules, uh, quotes, quote templates. We'll get into that in some future episodes, so just follow along. Um, again, we're tracking who are we selling to, how much, and when do we expect that revenue to close. Opportunities is a standard object. What I mean is accounts, contacts, cases, leads, opportunities, standard tab. You've got custom fields available. You can have multiple page layouts. You can have record types. You can customize it to your heart content. You can have validation rules, workflow rules. But let's start off with some of the standard fields. These are the core fields that you need to know about uh, when you're working with opportunities. So the first thing is the name field. So Salesforce has this as a free form text field. There's, there's a standard naming convention that most people use and that's the company name dash what are you selling. So if I was to give that example, here we have Acme and we're selling the widget 2000, the product that we're selling. Now the reason why you want to have it fairly descriptive is if you just said the widget 2000 and you sell a lot of the widget 2000, when you start running reports, you won't know who, it's, who you're selling to. So think of a dashboard, for example, when you're summarizing on the opportunity name. If the opportunity name is simply the company, you'd see just a whole list of Acme's or you see if you're just summarizing on the product name, the widget 2000, you would just see a, a dashboard listed of the product uh, widget 2000. So to get some more information, you kind of concatenate and add the, the company name and the product name. Some people will add the date field to the back of that. So this is the 2013 sale. Uh, this is the 2014 sale, just to give a little bit more information. Again, free form text, come up with a naming convention, how to use that. Some people even use workflow to replace and standardize that when you're saving a record, but a very important field. So we've got a couple of fields that you're gonna update regularly on the opportunity. I've got these outlined in green. Stage, which is a pick list, which really defines your business process or your sales process in Salesforce. We'll get into that a little bit in another episode. There's a couple of fields that are bundled together, forecast category, probability, and stage. That's why I have that little asterisk there. But just think of it as lead status or case status. It's a pick list that tells you where you are in the sales process. Again, we'll have another episode just on defining your sales process. Probability, it's a percentage field. It's your likelihood uh, that you're gonna close that deal. So if you're early in the sales process, it's typically a low percentage. As you're getting close to winning that deal, it's a high percentage. When you win a deal, it's 100% probability because you won it. If you lost it, it's a 0%. And you can maintain that. When you change your stage, probability is gonna default based on how you set up your sales process. Again, we'll have that in a future episode. Um, but you can always override it. So. Let me give you a use case. So let's say you have a really good customer. He buys all your stuff. Uh, you may be early in the sales process, but because he's such a good customer, you might juice up and, and raise the probability. Conversely, you might have a situation where you think maybe you're the third bidder on an, an RFP. You really don't think you're going to win it. You could be really far along in the sales process, but if you have doubts that you're going to win it, you might give it a low probability. 
the amount field, just the dollar amount of the deal, of the opportunity, what you think this is worth from a revenue standpoint. Close date, it's your best guess on when you think that deal is going to close. And the reason I kind of say your best guess, and I don't want you to beat up your salespeople too much because sales are fluid. You can go forward in the sales process. You might have to go renegotiate. You might have to go back and requote. You might have to send them back to contracts. These fields get updated a lot, and a salesperson really needs to maintain these fields to make sure all your reporting, your pipeline reporting, your forecast reporting is solid. So expect to do a lot of maintenance on these fields. Let's talk about the type field. So type field is a pick list field. Out of the box, it is new business is one pick list value and existing business. Really, it's a field to categorize your opportunity. So you can say, how much of this am I selling uh, to a new customer? How much am I selling to an existing customer? Again, you can categorize this. You don't have to use those pick list values. I've had clients that are, call it new, existing, or the out of the box fields, or one time, or maybe this is a renewal sale, so they can categorize it that way. It's a pick list. You can customize it any way you want. Next step is a 255 character text field. I like to use this field to let everybody know what needs to happen for us to move the deal forward or the opportunity stage forward in the process. So if we're um, working on proposals, our stage, for example, I might have uh, a little blurb of what is happening right now or, or the action that I need to take to move that deal to the next step. Really, you can use this any way you want. That's kind of a, a best practice. And then you're going to have a description field, very large 32,000 character text field. You can uh, use that to describe who you're selling to, more in depth about the product, the factors at play, however you want to do it. Let me flip this way on the board. There are a couple fields that get set uh, when you come out of lead conversion. So you have a lead, uh, which we've talked about in earlier episodes, was kind of a mashup of a company and a person. But when you convert that lead, there are some fields that are set on the opportunity that you need to know about. So lead source, whatever the lead source field was on the lead, there's a lead source, corresponding lead source field in the opportunity, and that value carries across. Primary campaign. This is a lookup field to a campaign record. If you had multiple campaigns on your lead, so you have a lead record and on your related list below the lead record, you had multiple campaigns associated to that lead, the last campaign that got associated to that lead will default to the primary campaign. So you don't have to think about which campaign to give credit uh, during the lead conversion. Salesforce just says, well, the most recent is probably the one that pushed them over the edge and made them qualified. We're going to associate to the primary campaign. If that's not the campaign you want, you can always go back, use the lookup field, and find another campaign. Close date. We talked about close date earlier, but when you convert a lead, close date automatically sets to the last day of the fiscal quarter. So people always wondered, well, why did Salesforce pick that date? It's the last date of the fiscal quarter. You can always override that. So on this next section, I'm, I'm calling fields you ought to know. These are fields that are typically not on the page layout, and you may not even see them if they are on the page layout. So if you don't see them, Check your field level security because Salesforce has been turning some of these fields off. Expected revenue is the first one I want you to talk about. A lot of people see these on reports, but they don't see them on the page layout. They're available. So expected revenue is actually a calculation. It's the amount, your dollar amount, times the probability that we talked about earlier, and the result is expressed in a dollar sign. So let me give you a quick example. Um, here we've got four opportunities, all of $100,000. Each deal has a different probability. So if you start calculating or extending out the expected revenue, even though we have four deals at $100,000 for a total pipeline value of $400,000, we have an expected revenue that's lower than that because it's weighted by the probabilities percent. So we really have a $200,000 expected revenue. So why would you use this field? So what we're trying to really say is, I have $400,000 in deals that I'm tracking, but I only have a 20% likelihood or 20% probability that that deal is going to make it all the way through the sales process and it's going to win. So the deals that are farther along the sales process has a higher probability, and so we have a better chance. So really, basically, you're saying, I have this pipeline, but based on our likelihood we think this is going to close, we're going to pull down that number because we don't expect to close all $400,000. Based on where we are on the sales process, we think only... 20% or one out of five of those are going to close. And so thus our weighted or expected revenue from a pipeline perspective is lower. Quantity. This is just a number field, but it's, it's, it's again, not on the page layout by default. If you turn on products, which we are going to cover in another segment, 
quantity actually counts up the number of products on the opportunity. If you don't have products on your opportunity, it's just a number field. So some people want to know how many units we're selling. People like to use that on the page layout. Forecast category. I'm not going to spend too much time on this because we're going to talk about it in our next segment. But forecast categories, similar to stage, with stage where we are on the, uh, on the pipeline, but if you're trying to, to forecast which deals are going to close in a, a specific period, Salesforce gives you a pick list of options that you can categorize that opportunity independent of the stage. So pipeline, it's an open deal. Best case, I think of this as if all the stars align, yes, best case scenario, this deal is going to close this month. Commit, typically one of the late, later stages that we're so far along the process, this is really shaping up, and I'm going to commit this to my forecast and tell my management, I think this one's going to win. Closed, which could be closed one or closed lost, and omitted, meaning you don't want to show it on a forecast. Okay, so we covered a lot of ground with that. I appreciate you hanging in there. So we're going to get into some other topics a little downstream. So tune in for more episodes. We're going to get into creating your sales process, products, price books, product scheduling, and quotes. Uh, we would love your feedback, so thanks, thanks for all the feedback we've gotten lately. If you want to reach out and contact me, there's a couple of good ways you can do so. I'm on Twitter, shell underscore black on Twitter, and you can email me at whiteboard at shellblack.com. Thanks for tuning in. We'll talk to you soon.